Mr. Pop Dogs. Good morning, Polly's Island peeps. Today is Fantastic Forever Home Friday. We have a special guest, Jamie Sanderson from Georgetown Foodland. Good morning, Jamie. Good morning, Dave. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Yes. <laughs> we also have... Jeremy. Oh, God. <laughs> Jeremy. <laughs> He's beautiful. So tell people about Jeremy, Chelsea. Um, two years old, I believe. How old? Two years old. Okay. He's fixed. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, uh, he's a home and he's like a something mix. Labrador. Labrador mix. And he's not bad. Yes. He just got there. <laughs> Yes. And uh, he is very calm. Like he does not he doesn't like pull you at all. He doesn't pull you. Unless you like really Yes. Very good. So Rob says, Good morning, Jamie and Chelsea. And Jeremy, yes. Yes. So today is your day off from the steel mill, right? Yes. That's is. great, yes. So we really appreciate you being a part of this. I'm thankful to be part of this. Thank you for having me. Yes, sir. I've been watching this for quite a while. Paul is Island Peaks. Followed it for quite a while. I'm really a big fan of Dave and I love what he's doing with this. So I wanted to, uh, again, thank him for asking me to be part of this. And it's a great view out here today, too. So I'm going to hand you the phone. Sure. And let you show everybody. And at the same time, tell people your story. All right, that sounds great. So, Jamie Sanderson, Georgetown Foodland. Uh, recently, I wrote a story about um, me doing this and it being seven years in. So, in November of 2013, I came up with Georgetown Foodland, but before that, I suffered a injury that had me uh, out of work for two years, and I went through 13 surgeries. Um, it was one of the hardest parts of my life, actually, because there were times where some of the surgeries that I had been through uh, they really didn't uh, succeed, and I'd have to wait for another opportunity to have another surgery um, so that we could try to alleviate what the issue was that I was suffering from. Um, when I got to the point where I had conversations with God, when my wife would be working and my daughter would be in school, I would be by myself. I'd have conversations and would be talking to God and asking God for a little bit of sanctity, a little bit of, you know, uh, relaxation in my mind from the anxiety, a little bit of the uh, relief from the pain. And I also ask God, please get me out of the situation I'm in. Help me, Lord, to heal. Help me feel a little better in my mind. But more importantly, Lord, put me in a position where I can try to help people after this situation so that I can show people that you didn't bless me without reason. And lo and behold, uh, one of the final surgeries I had, it took, I started the healing process and I got through, uh, well, again, like I said, one of the worst times of my life, but I also had a dog named Chance. My wife got for me uh, in December of 2012. And while my daughter was at school and my wife was at school work, uh, the dog would have been outside. I'd, 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 you know, would watch him outside, whatever. But there'd be times I'd go outside and kind of walk around the house, trying to, you know, get back into my motions again. And he was there for me to comfort me. 
uh, that dog was basically listening to everything that I had to, to, to discuss with my life that was going on, all my pains, my troubles, everything that I was going through. And I really love my dog. And unfortunately this year I had to put him down. He had cancer. You know, the, the, the sadness of 2020, it, it hurts everybody and everybody feels the effects of it, whether it be from COVID, the pandemic, uh, losing a job or losing a loved one. And that loved one was my dog. Um, I also have other things going on in 2020 as well. And that's, you know, my father-in-law, he's suffering from cancer and I, I'm, I'm praying for him, uh, praying for the fact that he gets better and hopefully he heals and uh, God takes care of him and gets him through. But more importantly, I'm, I'm, I'm praying just for a little bit of, of relief from this year for, for, for all the people that are out there, specifically the restaurant industry. And one of the things that me and Dave talked about yeah. <laughs> was scripture, right? And the, we talk about verses. Yeah. The good news. Right. So he asked me to, to, to share a verse that uh, kind of resembles what we're looking at today, right? You know, look at that beautiful sky. See that right there? All right, so I wrote it down so that I wouldn't get this wrong. I'm gonna let Dave read it. No, you read it. You want me to read it? Okay. I want you to. All right, so here it is right here. There it is. Lord, my God, I called to you for help and you healed me. Psalms 30, verse two. That verse was one of the many verses that my wife would talk to me through because she reads her Bible every single day before work to get her in the spirit, to get her through a day of pain, to get her through a day of anxiety. But also she helped me as well by reading to me. And that was one of the verses that stuck with me and got me through a lot of the stuff that I was feeling during the time that I was, you know, under recovery or, you know, having to recoup from a surgery that didn't work. Um, Today, I'm thankful to have three children. They're two stepchildren, Aiden and Nana, and my daughter, Bailey, but they're all my children because I take care of them and I love them equally. And my beautiful wife, Adrienne, who has gotten me through so many tough times and she has been with me, my rock, for 19 years. And I'm so thankful for her and I'm also thankful for the fact that she supports me 110% in what I do. And I equally support her 110% in everything that she does. Yes. Um, so not only were you healed, you've been healed physically. I know that's an ongoing battle, but you yeah. also had this vision of promoting local business and local restaurants, right? Not yeah. only were you, but so this, that's part of your healing, I think, is that you've, you've had this passion to help lo local restaurants. Tell people about that. Yes. So in a previous life before my injury, I, I've always been part of community service. I was always given and trying to do something to help people. Well, the avenue that I was in at that time really wasn't a productive avenue for me. And I, I just really wasn't comfortable. And then my injury happened and it kind of took me to a point where it's like, okay, I got to reinvent myself. I got to kind of, you know, just readjust, put myself in a position where I can use my passion in helping people in the right place. Well, in the recovery period, I find myself going to a restaurant on Front Street. Um, that restaurant on Front Street was pretty brand new. And the guy that was there um, served, I asked, it was on the menu, it was called a, a barbecue burger, Texas barbecue burger. Well, the guy that was back there, he served this burger. I, I kept looking at him. He kept preparing the burger like, like it was a masterpiece. He was like back there, you know, putting the lettuce on perfectly, uh, putting the right amount of barbecue on it, uh, making sure the bun was presentable all this stuff, right? So he brings it to me and as soon as I saw it, I took a photo of it. And when I took a photo of it, he looked at me and said, oh, no, 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 there's something wrong with it. Let me, let me know, don't share it to Yelp. Don't, don't, you know, don't, don't do whatever. I said, no, 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 no. I think the burger's marvelous, man. I want to share this with people so other people can come and, and try it. He's like, I'm not used to that. I'm not, you know, this is just, I just, I just got here. I'm not used to, you know, somebody trying to, you know, support me or, you know, I'm used to somebody going on Yelp and giving me a bad review, da, 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 whatever, anyway. So I shared it on Facebook. Two days later, I came back to him and I said, hey man, look how many likes you got on that photo. It was like 86 likes on Facebook, right? So I kept coming to the restaurant, kept building a re uh, relationship with him, him, his girlfriend, me and my wife, my daughter. We had my daughter's birthday party at the restaurant. But fortunately, it got to a point where he had to close the shop on Front Street and the farewell menu had a, the burger. It was named after me. He named it after me. And he named another burger after my wife. We got a dolphin out there too. Check it out. 
That's pretty cool. So, wow. <laughs> so from that point forward, I realized I had something inside of me that not only wanted to help people, but I saw where I, the, the, the art of perfecting your dishes, the art of taking care of a restaurant, the, the love that I saw that he gave his uh, customers, I wanted to exemplify that. I wanted to put that in the spotlight, not only for just that restaurant, but for all the restaurants in Georgetown County. And Georgetown Foodland came out of that restaurant closing because I didn't want to see any more restaurants close yes, yes. and have to you know, suffer with the fact that not anybody could get to enjoy that kind of stuff. You also told me something on the phone that really was neat. You said that you were tired of Georgetown being considered something. Tell, tell people what that was. Yes. So... You have heard it, folks, a lot, especially locals, that we're an in-between. We're a get from Charleston to Myrtle Beach. We're a get from Charleston to uh, somewhere else. We're not a stop here. We're, 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 not, we're not somewhere where you can visit and, and enjoy the day. Well, guess what, folks? We're not an in-between. No. Okay, we have a beautiful beach that you're looking at right now. You see the beautiful sky that's out there, the sun about to pop up. We have beautiful uh, businesses that are here. We have beautiful people that are here taking care of those businesses. But more importantly, we have beautiful restaurants. Amen. With great food and awesome chefs that are out there cooking behind the scenes, doing what they can. But they also give back to our communities. You'd be surprised to know how many restaurants give back to nonprofits and don't say a word about what they do. There are a lot of them that do that. They don't want the credit. They just help. But my thing is, is that these restaurants that do that kind of stuff, they need somebody in their corner. They need a support system. And for seven years, I've been building that reputation i've been building that you know that that, that camaraderie with them i've been yes. building that relationship and i want them people to see out there what we have to show we're not an in-between we are a place where you can enjoy a dinner you can enjoy a great day on the beach you can enjoy a walk on the hard walk on front street in georgetown you can enjoy anything you want brook green gardens all that stuff that we have yes. right but you can also enjoy great food that you would probably get somewhere in charleston savannah um myrtle beach uh charlotte anywhere else in the world new york there are a couple restaurants here in Georgetown, actually, I'd put against New York restaurants, and they would probably far you know, surpass some of the stuff that's on the menus. But here's the thing, though. I'm not about favoritism. I'm not about you know, picking one restaurant against another. I'm about supporting all of our restaurants here in Georgetown County and beyond. Yes. Awesome. That's so beautiful, Dave. Can look you at believe that, this? I know. Look. Even with clouds. Yeah. Folks, even with clouds, right? We can consider clouds uncertainty, anxiety, maybe depression. The sun, God, breaks through. You have to keep faith, folks, in whatever you go through in life. Keep praying. Keep making sure that you do something positive for one day. If you are blessed with the day you wake up, ask God, what do you want me to do today? And try to live in his name, try to live in the Lord's name, and try to do something to help people. Yes. You're right, they're all dolphin out there. Straight yep. straight out from you, man. Yep. So the water temperature is 65 degrees today, and the air temperature is 48. <laughs> yeah, you walked to the pier? Yeah. <laughs> so, so Chelsea, tell people about the puppy today. What's his name and everything? Tell people again about this He's been fixed. Uh, he's fixed. Um, he's a hound and a Labrador mix. He is very calm. He does not pull on the leash at all. Even if people are in a dog, he just gets kind of excited because it's like, oh. Um, he's very sweet and loving, I guess I can say. He loves car rides. Yeah, he yep, does. he does. He's beautiful. I love his coat. Yep. I took a picture in the car. I said one of his spots was like a whale on the side. It did look like a whale. <laughs> <laughs> Either that or a goldfish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's beautiful. So if you're looking for a forever friend that is absolutely a great, great dog, not I would say not real hyper. And he's only two. I mean, when we got here, he was like shaking his tail and stuff like crazy. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We thank you, Jamie, for sharing all that. I know it's been a tough year for you. And um, with Chance being put down, I know that has uh, been really tough. So we really wanted you to be here for this day so you could be a part of this with a sweet dog. Yep, I appreciate that, Dave. Thank you very much. Yeah, man. Nothing like petting the dog gets you through the day. You have such an inspiring story and the way you leaned on your faith through the tough times and now you're sympathetic towards others that are going through tough things. It's just, it's just um, great that you could be here. I appreciate it a lot. It yes, means sir. A lot. It means a lot to be one with you because the stuff that you're doing, but being with, with, a, with a creature like this right here, a dog that, that's lovable and, you know, deserves a good home. Um, you know, the thing about being with an animal, cat, dog, or whatever animal you choose, you have this bond that, that you know, it, it kind of, it's just like a human bond, right? It, whenever that dog or whatever leaves you, it, 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 it hurts for a while. Some people sure. never get over it. And, you know, I, I'm still getting over it. I really haven't had time to kind of process my, the fact that my dog is gone. I mean, this is his birth month. You know, this would have been his birth month. Sure. He's been nine years old, you know. It's... Anyway. Mm. Just for reference, I wore my shirt that I love to wear, my Antonio's restaurant and Andrew's shirt, but I want to show you the back. So here's the back, real quick. Antonio's is delicious. Yeah. It is yeah. delicious. My dog might not be with me here in, in physical form. He's here in spirit. Yeah. And anytime I get a chance to kind of share not only my story about restaurants with Georgetown County, I try to share my love with my family. Uh, my love with, with my dog. I try to share bonding because that's what we are having to do in this predicament with the pandemic, you know? We're getting back to roots. You're, you're bonding with family again because you're back with them, right? You're, you're not being stretched out far away. You're bonding with other companions in your life, animals. Um, County's day is a blessing because you're not guaranteed that. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and, take, and also, even with your restaurants and other businesses, you know, count them as well as blessings because, you know, these restaurants that we built relationships with, they're family too for us, right? It's on the local level. It's sad that a business that you've grown up with for maybe 25, 30 years eventually has to close their doors and you don't see them again. That's kind of a, that's kind of a loss too. It might, it might not be a, a physical separation type loss or a loss of death, but in retrospect, it's, it's a loss where you never get to see them again or never get to taste their food or never get to build, you know, be in that restaurant with the other friends that you had before. You know, case in point, ball and cue. All right, so ball and cue is a tradition in Georgetown, right? It's a staple point. It, it is a, a, it's a, it's a fundamental restaurant in Georgetown. Lots of people have built relationships in that restaurant and been ate there for years, decades, right? I mean, there's certain tables and they're dedicated for certain people, okay? When those people start to die off, those tables, the, the chairs are empty. That means a lot to people, you know? It also means a lot that whatever that restaurant, if that restaurant eventually closes or if a restaurant that we you come to love closes, that means a lot to people too. Well, it means a lot to me. That's why I do what I do. I do it for free. I don't do it for a charge. I've done it for seven years. I've done it out of the kindness of my heart. I've done it out of the passion that I have for these people. I've done it because of the talent that I've got. I've done it because I want to see our community, specifically the restaurant community, succeed. They've earned it. It's not that they've deserved it. They've, they're past that point. They've earned it. They've earned it. And especially in this situation with the pandemic and eventually maybe, who knows, uh, you know, um, restrictions might roll back around like we have to face in March. You know, they might be, you know, dining in restrictions, this stuff coming back. You have to look at it this way. When they get hurt the first time, it hurt them during the tourist season, right? Well, this isn't the tourist season. If they go back and have to restrict dine in and all this other stuff, whatever, what do you think our restaurants are going to do? They're not going to, they're not going to survive. And that's going to put more people out of work that's gonna put more people having to worry about what are they gonna do for their families that's gonna put more people having to worry about whether or not are we gonna have a culinary industry again I'm in their corner 
and more importantly, God's in your corner. Don't ever think that you're not that, that, that you're not you know having somebody out there to support you. Don't ever think that you're alone because you're not. You're not alone. God's out there for you. I found that out too. I had to be sat down in a situation and realize that there is out there there is God that, that's there for you. You just ask for the help. He'll answer on his own time. That's the other thing I've had to learn too. That's been the hardest thing, right? Because I'm, I, I'm, I want instant gratification. I want instant reaction. Please, God, help me now. Well, unfortunately, it's on his own time. And I've, I've learned that. Be humble, be patient, and be thankful for life. Thank you so much. What time you got? I have. Sunrise at 7.05. 7.03? We've got two, two, minutes two minutes. Let's see how he does with other dogs. He's, he's good. He's, let's take a look. Hello, sweetie. Hello, sweetie. Good, good boy. So that's a great sign. So of all the dogs we've had over the months, Jeremy is probably the calmest, I would say the most turnkey ready for family. Jeremy is ready. <laughs> he does like to walk. He didn't pull on you at all? Okay. Yes. Especially for being for two years old. Yes. So usually we sit down about now and watch him with the sunrise right behind him. It looks like he has freckles like a person on his snout right there. Because there's like orange freckle pieces right there on his snout. Yes. <laughs> oh goodness. Now it's time to lay on you. He's snuggling. <laughs> He's snuggling. <laughs> yeah. He's giving you a hug. How oh, funny. I'm so excited you got dolphins straight out ahead. That was really cool. What? There were dolphins straight out ahead this morning. You're joking. No, right oh. straight ahead. Oh, God, a bird. Hello, bird. Ah. Oh, hey, bird dog. <laughs> He's good, even with birds. Ah. Uh. There it comes. Yep. Just incredible. He's not a fan of the water? Oh, how funny.
Is it rough? Doesn't seem that rough to me. It's that northeast wind I think is making the waves come in like that. Yes. It's like a mountain dog. Yes. Like one of those movies. Like, um, like, not Old Geller, but, uh, Homeward Bound. Homeward Bound dog. There you go. That older dog who just didn't really care. <laughs> it was just like, I'm just going to sit here and fuck away. I'll bet. So it's about time to sign out. So... This is your opportunity, friends, to share this. It's not so that we can get more likes or more views, but so Jeremy can find a forever, fortastic forever home. That is our goal. That's why we're here with Jeremy today. He's at All for Paws in, right off Pettigrew in Polly's. And he is a sweet boy with freckles on his nose. <laughs> Just like my dog. Yeah, really? Yep, he had freckles on his nose too. Wow. So you have anything else you want to say, Jamie, before we sign out? Sure. Support your restaurants, support the culinary industry, and always eat it up Georgetown. I love it. Chell Bell? Uh, adopt Jeremy. He's really a really sweet dog. He is a sweet dog. Yes. We love you guys. We appreciate you. We're signing out. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Yes, may God bless you, keep you, and help you make great choices today and every day. Good we'll dog. talk to you soon.